This was quite the piece of video here. Tucker Carlson appeared on Roseanne Barr's podcast, and they were talking about the over-sentencing of the January 6th protesters, and Tucker talked about the impulse that he has not to want to lock people in jail unless absolutely necessary, and then he brings up Julian Assange and has some pretty harsh words for Trump's Secretary of State, Second Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo. Uh, this is uh, spit and fire right here. These are what we call fight words in the business here's talking about them like i would what does it say about them like i would never put someone in prison even who committed like a real crime unless i really had to i don't want to put people in prison yeah i guess i'm the liberal yeah i i, I visited i was in a prison last week they're very depressing i saw julian assange in london i wanted to ask you wouldn't put people that. in prison no except for a very good reason and they talk about the truth Talk about the truth being illegal. Look at he's paid for it with dozens of people. Well, Assange has never been accused of lying or of fraud mm -mm. or of making money in some criminal scheme. Assange has been accused of telling the truth, period. Yeah. And they are torturing him to death yeah. in front of all of us. No one's doing anything about it. Um, and that Mike Pompeo is a very, very sinister person. Isn't he? The worst. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that, and I've told Trump that. Never should have allowed him to run CIA or state. But Mike Pompeo tried to have him murdered. And that's a criminal act. He's there... not even charged with a crime in the United States. And Mike Pompeo is CIA director. This came out. Pompeo didn't deny it. I never heard this. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. I saw it. Yep, that did come out. That was a Yahoo News investigation, actually. That came out in uh, September of 2021 that Pompeo wanted Julian Assange kidnapped, poisoned, right. and obviously yep. killed. And that was out there in the mainstream media. Like, that was widely reported. Uh, how much oxygen did that get? How much oxygen did that get? Yeah, I mean, if that's true, that's obviously a guy who belongs in jail. Of course, it doesn't matter when you pick the right target. Whacked. Yeah, exactly. Let's let him finish uh, it. Yeah. Do you just, want me to uh, play the rest? Yeah, we'll play the rest. Yeah, we'll finish it up. Oh, my God. He tried to have Julian Assange murdered, poisoned in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. And that's a fact, okay? Wow. And it's been established and... Okay? Yes. Why is Mike Pompeo not in prison? Yeah. You're not allowed to right. murder people extrajudicially, especially when they haven't even been charged in the United States, which he had not been. Wow. So Mike Pompeo runs around these stupid Republican donor events, and you're like a world expert on whatever, and he's a criminal, and he should be in jail. Like, if, if Julian Assange is in jail, how about the attempted murderer, right? <laughs> Good point. Good point. Russell, what were you going to say? Uh, yeah, did we include uh, Misty's tweet as part of this? Uh, no, but that's where I saw this video. All right, so uh, Misty, our friend Wisty, uh, Misty, <laughs> Wisty, our, our friend, friend Misty, Misty Winston, Winston over at TNT Radio, uh, yep. over at TNT Radio, she made the point, and this is what's so frustrating about a lot of the people in this space, um, a lot of the kind of people who were theoretically on the right who we might agree with about certain things then you kind of look under the hood okay so roseanne is a fanatical trump supporter i wouldn't say that necessarily about tucker but she's a fanatical trump supporter so so who who was president when assange got arrested roseanne that's what right. misty pointed out you know this was under your hero donald trump so you want to be consistent why don't you disown trump over that I mean, it's great that they're saying these things to an audience that wouldn't listen to it coming from, say, Cornell West or, uh, you know, somebody in that lane. And Not Trump, that. by the way, sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, go ahead. Trump covered Mike Pompeo's ass when that reporting came out. This was after he was already out of office. This was 2021. But he said, no, no, it's not true. It didn't happen. Right. And Trump had the <laughs> chance to pardon Julian Assange, which Tucker right. urged him to do on the air right. very famously. And he didn't do yep. it. Right. Right. So, so yeah, I mean, why, why can't we just understand the guy's a big fucking pussy? Well, that's it. And we talk about this. Speaking of Cornell West, we've talked about this on our side of the political spectrum. Don't follow leaders, man. Don't don't worship heroes. Don't put people on pedestals. And that applies to these people, too. You know, it, it, if if Trump's behavior is inconsistent with your ethics, call him out, which I think Tucker is a lot more prepared to do than she is. He is. Well, that's why he said, I told Trump it was a huge mistake, you know, uh, hiring him in the first place, CIA and uh, obviously Secretary of State. Uh, Trump did say, I mean, sorry, Tucker did say in this interview that he is now 
an active Trump supporter, which he claims to have never been in the past, which I understand. I mean, you always got the sense he was going to vote for Trump over Biden. Right. But uh, he's not like Hannity, not like just a naked partisan. Right. Um, but he says that, you know, part of the reason he's backing Trump is because of the deep state's sort of effort to put him in jail, sort of, you know, keeping with the theme of the carceral state and, you know, uh, an overly empowered uh, deep state, permanent state willing to go after its political opponents, the weaponization of the federal government, as the uh, committee uh, named itself. So, you know, he is now calling himself an active Trump supporter, but, you know, at least he is willing to call out Mike Pompeo and speak in very, very strong terms about people who are, you know, on the Republican side of the aisle. Roseanne didn't seem she knew much about this. What did he say? She's he's paid with dozens of years, which I guess I mean, not quite dozens, but, you know, whatever. Right. Um, yeah. You know, he's, he's had a target on his back for over a dozen years now, um, mm -hmm. as it is. WikiLeaks formed uh, was it 2006. So, yeah, he has given quite a bit uh, of his life. And this was really the first time that Tucker spoke out about his meeting with Julian Assange at Belmarsh. Uh, there were those photos that were taken with him and uh, Julian's wife. And so um, I would love to hear more about this in the coming days and weeks. But real strong words there from Tucker Carlson for Mike Pompeo. Um, uh, anything? Yeah. I mean, not. Uh, yeah. I mean, Roseanne. OK, fair enough. She's she's Roseanne. Um, but it's just symptomatic of a broader thing that we've seen since the war erupted in Palestine. Um, that a lot of the people that we've nominally allied with, and and a lot of people have warned of that, and I, I never doubted them. I just felt like the enemy of my enemy. You just don't really have a choice when you're trying to build a free speech coalition. Like, was the danger always you empower these people, you're just going to face different censorship? Sure, and you're seeing that play out now with people like Douglas Murray, who was so brilliant in that uh, debate with Taibbi, on behalf of free speech, just virulently trying to shut down free speech in regards to that conflict. Yeah, it makes it very complicated because, like, you want to, like, the what um, Jimmy always brings up the Frederick Douglass quote, you know, I will partner with anyone to do good, no one to do bad. Right. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. But then do you empower them to do their own form of bad by allying with them? That's the other side of it, right? That's right. what complicates it, is that when you partner with someone, you are almost inevitably um, helping them build a certain power for themselves. And then if they will turn around once they have that power and weaponize that against people who they disagree with because they were never fighting for principle right. but only for their own power— Right. Uh, yeah, it becomes complicated. It becomes a very complicated question. In Tucker's case, I think it's good that he has stayed consistent on the Julian Assange issue, which he credits actually Jimmy Dore for persuading him to change his mind on that issue. So, um, again, how, you know, like it, it, well, it's it, complicated. It's tough because even like a big theme of this conversation with Roseanne was, and he, he says it at, at the, at the, beginning of that piece of video that we just showed. He says, I don't want to put people in prison. He says, I'm the liberal. When have you last heard Tucker Carlson right. refer to himself as a liberal? He's never referred himself to right. himself that way, right. as far as I know. Um, so he's talking about, you know, this sort of anti-incarceration mindset, right? This, this tendency as I have, and, and this is what, this is why I always thought that the January 6th people were overcharged and over sentenced. I think you know, and like I said, I, I can't go all the way to prison abolition, but one of the things I've always respected about the abolitionists is that they set a goal in the future. Hey, can we get to a world without prison, right? right. Uh, and that that's a great vision to have. It's a great aspiration, and it's a great way to sort of rewire your brain into thinking, hey, you know, shouldn't locking a person in a cage be an absolute last resort that we reserve for absolute emergency situations to protect the public from violent criminals. Should we be just routinely locking people up, you know, even if it's for a weekend for unpaid traffic tickets or whatever? Like, isn't that a drastic move? And the mm -hmm. fact that Tucker started that by expressing that is encouraging at the same time you know, a bunch of looters kick in the window at a Nike store in Chicago, and he's going up there talking about how we need to clean up the streets and lock all these people up. So it creates a very complicated dynamic. Uh, it 
it does. And, um, you know, it's it's like the story of the of the serpent and the frog, right? The frog carries the serpent across the river. And you always have to wonder when you get in bed with these people, are they going to bite you as soon as you get them to the opposite shore? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, it is. It's tough. Like, I don't have an answer. There's no easy answer, as this recent episode has proven now. Please clap. 